The real deals are on the air. And we're talking about ghosts or whatever it goes bumping tonight. And it goes live right now. Hello everyone, I am Kenneth Deal, and my wife, Farah, is along for the ride as usual. What would it be without Farah? And guess who else is in the house tonight? Deborah Johnson, Deborah Glassell Johnson, for you uh, fans of the of the horrific story, <laughs> terrible fans of horrific story, to Dublin, Connecticut. So she's uh, she's our third I'm wheel. She's back from assignment. <laughs> yeah, she's back from assignment. <laughs> we sent her to Yugoslavia, didn't we? Mm-hmm. And you forgot the cameraman, so you went by yourself. I know. <laughs> oh, that's not even plugged in. No, it's al- it's always oh, fun when my tech guy doesn't plug me in. Yeah. It's almost as bad as not I'm having my mic a new plugged in. Uh, a second I'm personality. Lead singer. To, so we have an extra guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think but yeah, the, we need to put the dog in charge of tech. <laughs> the dog. Hmm, that's an idea. Oh, she doesn't have an opposing thumb. Okay, <laughs> we're going to need that to pull plugs. Hey, you guys, uh, we're on uh, the uh, second half of the ghost. It's not exactly going to be half the show or mm-hmm. anything like that. Ghost part two, going over the list, exactly. and uh, an Ask a Demonologist portion, which will be basically some questions from the chat room and one mm-hmm. pre-canned one at least. And it never it never ends. Someone said once it can't be done, talking just about these topics all the time. Well, you know, I mean, some guys do talk about Bigfoot all the time. Bigfoot and, and uh, Lot this monster. When, once you run out of material after a first uh, hour, and we've got a crayon box full of ghosts tonight, kids. So sit back and pick your color. Ooh, crayons! Time to pray. Uh, all right, take it away. Mm-hmm. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Say, Michael, the Archangel, Saint defend us in battle. Be our protection and against and the malice and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him when we humbly pray. Do thou, O Prince and Heavenly Host, by the divine powers of God. Cast in hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam to the world, seeking to ruin his soul. Say amen. Amen. Well, a big shout out to all those people that always support us. Thank you all for showing up. Don, Cheryl, Cecilia, Zuma, Eric, Jennifer, Michelle. And of course, I know Denise Pridemore is out there sending us some mega hearts. Thank you guys for coming out. Hi, Harry. We really appreciate you guys. Just hanging out with us, being in the chat, asking questions. Please feel free to argue with us anytime, right, Deb? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Not with Deb. Oh, oh my gosh, Don. Deb's fiery. Oh, and Dale from Michigan's in, too. Wow. It's going to mm-hmm. be a full house tonight, you guys. So sit back and get ready to get your ghosty on. What Where are we exact- starting with tonight, Ken? Where exactly did we uh, we end? I didn't mark it. Well... <laughs> The end is always a good place to start at the beginning. (laughs) Hmm. Thanks for all the hard. Oh, we started on the top, not not near the end, I suppose. So we're gonna just we're gonna go over the top twenty, and then I'll go over to make sure that nothing was missed on the other list. Uh, A top twenty, not necessarily in order. And number one, and uh, feel free to uh, jump in and comment on these to elaborate and add uh, your own distinctive opinions on us. Ghosts, by definition, are human spirits. We decided that at the beginning when we define ghosts, different types. That's only exactly. some... Oh, sometimes you look somewhere else and then they give you all different kind of definitions, so don't get caught up in the definitions. No, no. Or it's description. Don't call him Hat Man just because he has a hat. Don't call him Curly because he has a bowler hat and he goes woo-woo-woo. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so we're and not- we forgot to tell people, don't forget to like and subscribe, folks, okay? Like subscribe like, like and subscribe, subscribe okay youtube we always save the videos for you so yeah number two demons can and will appear as human ghosts to deceive but not always this is one you'll get in with so many other denominations huh they uh that's one of the big things we used to talk about the great masquerade in the book we don't you can know, over the years you, you use new terminology the great masquerade that was uh, a idealism i guess uh, children's spirit is uh, one of the most common ones, and as we summarized about not mm-hmm. all ghosts are demons and not totally. all demons are ghosts. Anything to add to that? Let's throw, throw your two cents in. 
And oh, this that's right too. Uh, by the way, uh, everybody in the chat room out there, you can go ahead and put something in there. Hey, what about as we bring these up? You can stop us. Yeah, on the Deb way. and I are monitoring chat, so we're mm-hmm. glad to write down and jot your little questions as we go. Especially, you know, if you think we run over a topic, just pop it in there, and it, we'll get to it. I promise, because we'll be writing it down. Yeah. Thanks for that, because I can't seem to get the chat room up here without the video. I think it's up. a really important thing to note. A lot of it's very, very confusing for people to understand that, and especially the people that believe that all ghosts are demons. Is yeah. that yes, some ghosts are just ghosts, and some mm-hmm. you can pray away. Some they just yeah they're like a bad image on a wall. They're just they're hanging out, and. One of the most invitational forms of demonic infestation is a sweet little ghost pretending to be your friend. A new friend, a pretty friend, a sexy friend, a young friend. And I think that from the cases that I've seen and I know Ken's seen, when you look at the averages and percentages, uh, yes, the invitational ones are mostly evil. Evil intentions, evil desires. Yeah. So don't trust them, even when they yeah. seem no, like the no. the feeling isn't there. The false flags of uh, warm fuzzy or human, or uh, if you consider yourself as sensitive that you didn't pick up that it was a demon, yeah. don't get us started on that. That's why you can't rely on that stuff because they can fool all of the senses. I know. And then we're just mere mortals, and it's probably only a guardian angel anyway gives you the intuitive sense. Exactly. Uh, Hi, Father Dennis. Hi, Laura. Hi, Jen Evans. Sorry, had to stick that in there. Oh, did Father you? Dennis is in. Father Dennis, oh my gosh. <laughs> I know, not that Father Dennis, okay? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, oh, this is Jamie Dennis. Uh, yeah. Yes, Jamie our, Dennis. Our, our priest, uh, Father Dennis is, Dennis is his first name. Well, not our priest, he was a pastor. He was our pastor. He we get all our St. Benedict medals. Got our kids well, for used to. communion. Benedictine priest. Uh, prayers for uh, Father uh, Dennis uh, Daughtry. Is that how I pronounce it? Doherty. Well, always, a Doherty. Doherty. He's not a Daughtry. He's a we Doherty. Always, He's Irish. We always have our St. Benedict medals uh, blessed by him, and uh, he passed away, and uh, it was a big funeral today. So, uh, yeah. And uh, the, you know, on the topic of, of ghosts, you never assume even your your favorite parish priest went straight to heaven. You might uh, want to make sure that he's going to go to heaven by saying yeah. prayers. That's what the funeral was originally for. It was a mass offering for the dearly departed. Yes. Not one of those things where you go and pay your last respects. for the dead, literally. And then the person's ghost stands on the side like, what, that's all you got to say after I saw my life I spent with you? <laughs> you know, I mean, that's not what, that's not what goes on. It's like, some more yeah. prayers, please. I'm going to purgatory for a few months. <laughs> I mean, it could be something like that. We don't know what, what kind of things uh, could be lurking. And it doesn't say we anything about know. the dearly departed in a negative light. It says that they would rather that you pray for them. And uh, hey, if they're you know get there faster, don't assume someone is really good or someone uh, exactly. is uh, really evil. Never make assumptions. Or even that the most evil person you thought might have gone to hell, or you know, uh, you never know. There might be deep in purgatory, and uh, God, and Jesus wants us to pray even for those who persecute us. Let's see, uh, as, um, that's right, oh, number three, we mentioned that a little bit. Hold on a second, before you go on, we have a question from chat. Okay, perfect. Our, our friend uh, and one of our uh, group helps, uh, David, has a question about, can ghosts be someone that has recently passed away that is specifically requesting help? Is that is that possible in, you know, the laws of nature and the Catholic Church? What What are we taught about that? When they come there and they're asking for help, like help me find my body or uh, help me th- discover who my murderer is yes. or something like ghosts. Oh, find me my million dollars in the wall, please. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> well, my Remember the story Gerald Brittle told us about? Uh, uh, Gerald Brittle, author of the, the demonologist book, The Extraordinary yeah. uh, Careers of Ed Larry and Warren. We yes. bring them up from time to time also because there wasn't really any books out there no. At, no. Uh, when this book came out. And Gerald Brittle... Is uh, I guess it doesn't matter. He's actually a deacon, and he's uh, he's a participant with the Council of Bishops. So he goes to the Vatican back and forth. So he's not just some author. He's also a Ph.D. psychologist. Then it's one of the reasons uh, because he's you know grammar Nazi as well as the publishing company. I asked him to write that write that book and Deb's Deb's book was also written by Gerald Brittle. So. Um, 
You know what Father Jamie just said? He said, yeah. thanks for the welcome. He's doing his push-ups. Now, I want to mm. know if he's making his dog do them, too. <laughs> 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 yeah, dog you know, that's something we got to talk about, too. we got to talk about ghost animals, too, at the end, because, I mean, that's something a lot of people have questions about. Um, I know. Uh, let's see. So, like, in, uh, do I have the, the question right, though? It's like when they pretend to be... When they pretend to be a deceased relative, could, yeah. is it possible that they're a deceased relative, recently deceased, asking mm-hmm. for help? Is that possible? Yeah, I, yeah. I believe it's possible, and I believe the Catholic Church not only acknowledges this and the saints and the, the scriptures, the writing that... It is possible, although, mm-hmm. um, what was it? Uh, was it Saul? Uh, no, the witch it was, of Endor, you mean? Yeah, the witch of Endor that pulled up the prophet. Yeah. He wasn't exactly recently deceased. He'd been dead for, what, months, years? I don't even remember. But I yeah, know, yeah. you know, that came, Samuel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Samuel. He was really upset, and he was like, I want an answer, and I want my prophet now. Mm-hmm. So, uh, can Not it be? The dead it is a, possible, yeah. but you really have to kind of step back and yeah. think about it. Then you got to think, what's he asking for help for? Exactly. Or yeah. what is he supposedly offering help for? It's like you're held in purgatory. I mean, if they give you a scenario like, That's I can't be released. Really oh, I know. Kind of crazy. Here's a good story. This is from uh, Maria Sima, uh, the poor souls. Uh, yes. She was a mystic. She passed away, a German woman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's a story here that um, there was a woman who uh, had been seen in town, a ghost. Actually, in this whole area of the town. I think mm-hmm. she died in some sort of, like, uh, yeah. landslide or something. And uh, so when the woman came to uh, her door, Ooh, knocked one. on it, she heard the knock, and, you know, and all that stuff, mm-hmm. opened the door, mm-hmm. and she was there, and she asked for food. She, uh, she said, can I have some food? She says, I'm, I'm really hungry. And so she went and got food and held it out to her. Instead mm-hmm. of taking the food, the woman just stood there, and she says... She said, thank you. When I was in this life, I denied someone asking for food, just like I'm asking you. And because you were the first one here, since I passed away to give me food, exactly. now I can move on. You know, in other words, they were here in some sort of oh, wow. purgatory scenario, like, uh, uh, I don't know, what would you call it, community service. And then she disappeared right in front of her. So yes, that's, exactly. That's an example of how you can help, but I don't think they're going to put you on a scavenger hunt. They might be trying to start a relationship with demonic spirit. <laughs> you know, what do you think? <laughs> Anything I, I'm, I'm sorry, I just read Father's comedy. Oh, no, but that was... His <laughs> dog, Bernadette, is too fat to do push-ups. <laughs> put her on a diet. I haven't seen dogs do push-ups <laughs> yet. The only thing they do is they do that they thing just, with their arms They just got to get up and, and go, oh, give me food. Ghosts <laughs> don't do that, folks. I don't think they have that kind of... <laughs> they're back. But, they can do push-ups with the back. By the, by the time you answer that, we do have another question about ghosts. Mm-hmm. Can they actually? Can a ghost actually be a soul in purgatory? So in other words, yeah. um, for those of you not familiar with the concept and the teaching of purgatory, um, the idea of purgation is to make a soul pure before it can actually stand before the presence of God. Mm-hmm. So... Instead of being immediately entered, you know, to hang out at the gates of heaven with Jesus and, you know, meet everybody and be happy, your soul's got to be a little bit purgated. So they believe, it's the belief and it's the witness and testimony of numerous saints and tradition of the church that a soul, it has to stay in the highest level of hell. And uh, for whatever reason, they are purged of whatever problems or sins they mm-hmm. could have dealt with so in order for a soul let's say a soul in purgatory to appear here on earth it would need the divine will and express will and intention of god how would it get it the only way that from what i know from the thomistic teachings that's thomas aquinas and uh from a couple exorcists that we know it would not only have to have god's will to do this it would have to have a specific purpose related to the direct, um, shall we say, mortification, or specifically, it would have to help the soul in its journey towards heaven. So for whatever reason, it was coming here like, what's that story in the Bible where, uh, the, the story where the man was, you know, dying of thirst in hell, and he came back and told his, he, he begged God to please you know, send a message that I don't want the rest of my family going to hell, so don't do this. I mean, mm-hmm. there there's always an express purpose and intent. That would be the only way I know of. Ken, Deb, thoughts on souls in purgatory? Souls in purgatory, I guess. Appearing? 
oh, appearing to you. Yeah, like with the, yeah, yeah, well, like that case on that that mm-hmm. we just told you about. Yes. That was only to her. She's the only one who knew it was a ghost. So for some yeah. reason, because she was off, she was always yes. doing prayers. She's one of those people who went to mass every day, mm-hmm. and uh, um, kind of like you know. In, oh, in yeah. a way, a living saint, because she lived alone, and she just devoted all her time to this. So that's what God gave her, this extra mm-hmm. special task. And all the people in the neighborhood just thought it was just a baker, and they rejected her. Most they'd be like Casper. Remember, the eyeballs pop out like a ghost, you know, like and run off or something. Thank you, Tony. Lazarus and the rich man. I was having a 40s moment in my 50s days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they and just said that in a reading a, a few exactly, Sundays ago. Exactly, exactly. So. Yeah. And um, Don was saying the other reason that a soul may come back, Don and Brent, the soul needs prayer. The soul needs prayer. Mm-hmm. And that's a, a definitely a, a possibility. If a soul needs prayer for help and assistance, mm-hmm. it's definitely going to be stuck in some place where there's a possibility that somebody that is praying can pray for them. I completely yeah, and that's probably that. the most common thing is if they ask uh, they ask you for masses, like when they asked Padre Pio, oh, as we yes. told last week, mm-hmm. the monk uh, deceased in the chapel asked uh, for if he could have masses said. And I think he said three masses and he would be able to move on. Oh, yeah. Uh, but here's the, the one that kind of throws you off on that is mm-hmm. in the 1500s, the famous case that spawned the, yeah. the uh, bishop to write and compile basically on the fly in part, and then he made notes about it. The original Roman ritual was the uh, exorcism of Nicole Aubrey, a French girl. Oh, yes. She was 15, and and she was just kneeling in mass. We don't know about these. Maybe she struggled with morality or something, or or maybe she dealt with witchcraft. It's it's hard to tell. She got really possessed, but it did serve a a great purpose because Mm -hmm. it did show that the church, you know, uh, power over such evil that no one else, uh, the the, uh, the Huguenots, which were a French. uh, I don't know what do you call it, French division of the, uh, yes. the Lutherans, and uh, it was kind of a head to head, very interesting in itself. But you know what? The, what happened is she was kneeling in a church and saying some prayers. All of a sudden, this apparition appeared to her and said, "You must pray for my soul." Mm-hmm. And then shortly after that, she uh, she became possessed. So people would go like, "Hmm, that's kind of confusing." So was the ghost a demon or? Makes we you wonder, doesn't it? We can't we can't really look up detailed case notes in some of those because uh, mm-hmm. maybe there's some of them are locked away, but that one's kind of vague, and I think that's the most they had on it. But that's oh those are good gosh. questions. Yeah, exactly. Anything else? Eric before we Schrag go? Bl- brought up a really important a story. Remember the nuns of Loudon that um, were perpetually uh, or consistently bothered by ghosts mm-hmm. in the convent, and they became possessed. Uh, that was a good story. That was an amazing... Um, uh, well, I don't mean it was a good story in the sense it was an excellent learning good. story to read. Yeah. And, and That's what we from. always mean, folks, before anybody... Yeah, not as a good story. It's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, let's gather around and laugh Yeah, so, that. Deb, I said your story no. was a good story or, or something along yeah, those lines Yeah, we don't laugh earlier. at you either, Deb. Yeah. And this is like, oh, my gosh. Which, don't let sure you do all we the don't. time. You always make fun of me. <laughs> 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 That's Ken, not me. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Not she's me. right. Yeah. She's Not right. Me. Yeah, you guys both make fun of me, so I gotta well, get Well, that's back our so. job. <laughs> You're the boy. You try, Ken. <laughs> You're the boy. Okay, next one on what, the list. What a ghost can experience, you know, from their perspective in the afterlife, mm-hmm. and to some degree, if they if they show themselves, we might see what they're experiencing totally. in some part. Can, this can be as unique as the person is, and this means uh, your experience in. Uh, and purgatory can be very unique. The uh, Orthodox have some kind yes. of s- strange. Uh, I think it's strange. As, it's it like strange the. To you? We had a, a guest on long ago, Dab. His name is B.W. Melvin. Mm. Am I lent my dad a book and I don't know where it went uh, because he's yeah, passed he away. Yeah, he sent me a copy. I have his book. Oh, wow. okay. Yeah. yeah, that was nice of him to do that. You remember the the perception of purgatory in there that it was like cubes. You know, like the the mm. holodeck on Star Trek, like you go into one, and he was yeah. walking through there, and it was this disgusting environment, and he could see different people dealing with hell or pur- he called it hell, but I think it could have been a purgatory right. too, and that was uh, one place uh, was an environment where this woman was like at some country home, and she was like being reunited with all her relatives, but he could see that she wasn't seeing the same thing he was. He could see that they're all demons. Yes. These ones coming up to her and all that stuff, and another one was a guy on a ship, you know, in some sort of water, and it's, uh, he could see that, and then it was like encased in some sort of. I've heard things about that, but the Orthodox are kind of 
I don't know. Uh, ask an Orthodox priest or something about that, but how well do they really talk about a, a place like Purgatory? That's just a Catholic name for it. And so, speaking of which, Athena would like to know, she said, is Purgatory Catholic Church doctrine? Yeah, originally. It's always been, it's 2,000 years yeah, old. Yeah, she says so Orthodox, they just do, not, the Orthodox word. do not have a concept of Purgatory. Mm-hmm. But that's a... It, uh, one of the things you can say about it is that purgatory and hell are supposed to be connected. I think Our Lady said that at Fatima, or maybe well, they are. One. Purgatory is supposed to be the highest level of hell. Mm-hmm. It's still a it's form a te- of they call hell. it a temporary. Yeah, it is. And but it's a temporary hell. It's not like the permanent hell, the one there's no getting out of. Mm-hmm. You still have the option to make um, choices to pray. Um, the soul is still open to receive certain graces whereas yeah. uh, hell is basically you're totally cut off from grace you're totally without god you know mm-hmm. you've refused and no one ever ever goes into hell because god wants them there they go there because they turn their back on god not because god doesn't want them god is a loving and just god exactly i don't know no. On that, uh, just another fascinating point is that uh, some of the ghost stories, and uh, before we realized demons are in there more when I was uh, much younger, uh, we were researching the ghost and Mm -hmm. doing, you know, all that stuff ghost hunters do, whatever, except with the, didn't have the equipment, obviously. And uh, uh, some of these ones, when you get into the old country, those really get really... I don't know. Fascinating. That's why the, they always make for good reading and book and all that kind of oh, stuff because yes, it's almost definitely. romanticized to some degree, and you can't help it because mm-hmm. they're not terrifying. <laughs> and like the, uh, if you see some of these ghosts at a castle, you see them going about their business, and the environment mm-hmm. is different. You'll see them using a feather duster on a yes. table that's not there. They're in. A, it's sort of like this string theory kind of idea that the ghost still sees its environment. As it existed when that person was alive, because uh, the maid identified as s- several hundreds of years is, is still there, and it don't give me this residual stuff either. Cause I'll bop you with my cereal box. <laughs> 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 and so they see they, their environment could be different. When the fact that you're seeing it is means that you can say prayers. They've been in there for three hundred years. I mean, oh, that's pretty. Yes. That's pretty bad. Suicide. You remember that movie House, House with William Cott? They, I wish they wouldn't Never have made that Goofy it. movie. It would have been an even a better movie when I Goofy. I see that one. Uh, the, uh, the, the scenario in there was... Ah, um, oh, shoot. What was, I, what was the reference on that? It just escaped my Purgatory mind. Purgatory Ghost. Nothing to do with the... Oh, man. I'm sorry, folks. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> no cue card. It's live and unscripted. Don't we love it? Okay, well we uh, we won't stay on uh, we won't stay on that because it's like a, it, it's a it's not such a big part of the movie it's minuscule and I could you know uh, go on and I'll, I'll figure it out but you know what it's, it's on our dime and we got to stay on time here girls and boys okay on dime <laughs> on time yeah. next number is up next number is there are uh, uh, three basic types this is a uh, this arguable of course uh, good ascended which are saints. We can't say that angels are uh, because they're not human and never were exactly. human. Exactly. And good unascended; those are ones that are in purgatory. They have not been made uh, put into he- uh, heaven yet, mm-hmm. yeah, so to speak, or they haven't gone to heaven yet. Exactly. And then the condemned, evil or lost souls. Last week we read some excerpts from the uh, the late, the great exorcist mm-hmm. uh, Vatican Gabriel Amorth, and for the first time in his second book, which is an interview. Uh, memoirs of an exorcist there's uh, several captions in there he starts to identify that human ghosts do work with demons not yes. the good ones of course the, you know it could be against a relative that they you know have still on this earth a surviving relative oh, yes. but it's important to note that the exorcist didn't address these things before because he was talking more about people and scenarios not houses and and purgatory spirits so the bigger questions were coming out I even wondered if he believed in it I know Father Forte has said some things that uh, the Spanish exorcist, who said things that I got the idea that he's not aware of it at all. Yeah. But Father Amor, the rich in his experience, and the elder priest, uh, Father Forte, much younger, when you're in doubt if he was 25 years or more mm-hmm. younger, uh, uh, detailed that. I think it's important to note. Uh, some of this stuff is like uh, Sylvia Brown and some of these others distorted some truths about ghosts, you know, like said so that they're about three feet off. Well, the I find floor. a lot of them make it up as they go along. 
Yeah, like some spirit guide told him. So whatever comes out of it, the late Sylvia Brown, whatever comes out of their imagination, of which they think is their imagination mm-hmm. that came out of a movie. That I remember hearing that people said later on, like that, that she uh-uh. should be uh, considered some sort of like expert. When she says something, we gotta like refute it right mm-hmm. away and say, no, 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 that's stupid. Totally. <laughs> so, uh, with that, yeah, well, that was supposed to be what it was. It's was supposed to be like a like saint or something that they won't be. There's no, there doesn't seem to be guideline for it because we know from the accounts, like a saint, just because they're ascended, doesn't mean they're going to show up three feet above the ground exactly. all the time. But you know, like I said, people like Sylvia Brown give it some sort of thing like that. They could be walking on the floor. Uh, the sis- Sister Faustina portrait, Jesus was standing on tile right in front of her, and that wasn't right after the uh, resurrection. And he's uh, an ascension. He's an ascension mm-hmm. uh, ascended into heaven. So don't go by those like, oh, three feet off the ground, that's ascended. You know, when their feet are on the floor, they're an unascended spirit. Okay, don't go by that. Number six, the uh, these condemned cannot be redeemed in the afterlife. And that's mm-hmm. clear, That's also with uh, 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 with demons, too. You know, that old notion that can demons be redeemed. Uh, so we're not talking about demons in this show, so uh, let's, let's stick exactly. on the ghost topic, <laughs> people in the chat. <laughs> we got to stick with us. <laughs> Uh, like so, uh, like if Jeffrey Dahmer did not make his peace with God before he died, unless he had an awful lot of people, like a family priest, praying for him, seriously, and to get him more in the out of the black, uh, he's a condemned soul, and you can't get him out of that state when Very it goes so far. Much so, and um, number seven, they will aid the demonic in their efforts to oppress mankind. We mentioned that already with Father Amorth. I guess there's not a whole lot to add yeah. because the strategies can be that an old farmer that was really nasty in that house to everybody shot kids full of buckshot and uh, I mean rock salt had buckshot. <laughs> uh, we had one up in our neighborhood as Denise Pridemore's uh, husband uh, will uh, acknowledge that. What was that? This, uh, I forgot what the name of it. I used to call him Old Man Scott. How funny. And if he was bitter in this life and he's bitter in the next, boy, he's gonna he might be haunting that farm property and then trying to help <laughs> demons get get access. And uh yeah, what uh any uh, questions from the chat room, we'll go ahead and pop them in there. Oh by the way, yeah, hello uh, Father uh Jamie and uh there's uh uh any anybody uh out there such as uh I haven't heard from some of these uh people in a while, Father Mike. We'll have to get him on. Next week, we're going to have Father Bob Bailey back on. So Norton's make sure you in the house. And mm-hmm. A bunch of other people join, mm-hmm. like Zuma and Tony. And, and yeah, hello to everybody. That, that first time listener, watcher, however you're mm-hmm. receiving this. Yeah. I'm sorry Thank it's you all not for joining. Don't captions. forget to like <laughs> this video. Find the little thumb. Like the video. It helps people. It really does. I mean, I hate and to subscribe buy, but on YouTube. People actually find it in search mm-hmm. listings if you like it. And besides that, it's it's you know it's just like it's a sweet thing to do. So like and subscribe if you can. Thank you and share if yeah. you dare. And <laughs> we're on number what, Ken? This is uh, number eight. Number um, eight. Over time, the unascended, and that's just a polite word for purgatory spirit. The ghost may change in its light brilliance to brighter as it grows in this in its spiritual journey. Where did this notion come from? From uh, solely from research. <laughs> <laughs> no, the you know why? Because if you know the theology of uh, when you are serving your purgatory sentence, mm-hmm. your spirit is getting brighter and brighter as the time goes on, as is seen as a ghost and some of these old local hauntings that went on and on. People reported it as being brighter. It went from the gray lady mm-hmm. to the white lady, you know, that kind of thing. The haunting of Civil War house and that kind of thing. That's but the theology area. fits because if you're starting to catch up on your restitution, you go from the black to the white would make kind of sense, right? From the darkness to I the light. I would think so. And in the last days when you're right ready to go to heaven, you might be seen as a, almost like an angel of light. One of the examples here, I guess, you could use is Sister Faustina's story about the nun who passed away. And the first time she saw her, she was praying in a disembodied face, just like the game Doom 3 with the flames around it or something showed up and it looked angry you know i mean that's our perception if you're in pain your face can look like anger especially if you don't know something Mm -hmm. painful is going on so she's offered masses and continued prayers and then when she saw the face again show up at prayers it looked even more it looked really angry and and it looked more 
She continued the prayers and offering the masses, and then it appeared again on another day, and it, it was glowing and it had a smile. That's the probably the biggest example I can come up with right now uh, for that, in addition to the things there. So I kind of perceived it yeah. as God's justice that over time that the you know the the experience that they had in purgatory is changing, mm -hmm. and their lightness of being or whatever would would also evolve uh, as their restitution is paid or their learning experience. Kind of getting deep on this show. I'm glad these things are coming up. Mm-hmm. As we can move around on this, uh, over time, let's see, number nine, let's see, uh, the condemned ghosts cannot choose to linger on earth simply to escape their fate. I know some people's perception seems yes. to be that uh, they're, uh, they're able to do that. Mm -hmm. um, it's like a, um, I'm not sure what the second, what, what I, what I typed in there for. <laughs> If they are seen, experienced here, they are already working for the demonic, and that's, so that's that's talking about the condemned ghost in particular. So, so they uh, they can't just choose to stay here to, to avoid your fate. That is the sign sealed and deliver. Exactly. Some people are remember you know like in ghosts when it just uh, or, uh, opened up and it sort of like grabs them these shadowy things, yeah. drag them away, and I like the movie Drag Me to Hell. I mean, that, that old gypsy woman should have been the one that got dragged to hell. You'd think. <laughs> I don't know what that was all about. Some gal was trying. You see that movie? It's like a little short, quick thing. It's just some young gal, and she gets cursed by a gypsy trying to, you know, keep her boss happy and not give her a loan. And she wants a third mortgage on her house or something, and she puts a curse on him. And she's just totally us. witchy and evil. And uh, so at the end, she gets sucked, pulled into hell, literally. The ground opens up and pulls her down in some red, <laughs> red fiery caverns. It's like, what's she do? I mean, when movies don't have justice so many anymore, like even old tales from the no, crypt. No, they don't have decent endings, really. <laughs> I used to call them the <laughs> Stephen King ending, because Stephen King starts screwing with people, at, uh, giving them shock endings, just to mess with them, where the hero dies. Yeah. Yeah, I get, got sick of that stuff, too. Because, you know, we like to... Uh, Horror movies. I don't like slasher movies and demonic movies, that kind of thing, but uh, g good ghost stories, that sort of thing. There's, there's got to be justice in there. I would think. Some some real justice. To make it interesting I mean. anyway. Mm hmm. Interesting to say the least. Not too goofy and too, uh, too crazy. And these, uh, let's see, um, a condemned human spirit can't seem to work alone, however, they have to answer to their demonic master. This was mentioned in uh, Gabriel Amort's book, too, um, that, yeah, in the afterlife, you're not free to roam and do what you want. You're still, you're on a leash of a demonic spirit. You know, you think you're going to go to uh, hell and party with ACDC's uh, former singer, whatever his name was, with Brian Johnson. You know, mm -hmm. you, you went the highway to hell. And Basically. You, uh, you're you going to be subject to your demonic master, and it's not going to be fun. You know, uh, just picture what slavery might have been like for someone on this world, and then uh, it's going to be uh, how many times worse than that. Uh, condemned souls are also referred to as minions of demons in some cases. So if you hear that in a prayer, uh, not that we're talking about demons tonight, but when people say, all oh, you evil and unclean spirits, well, you know... That's not necessarily the same spirit. I mean, because what, what if we're, you know, trying to cover, you know, the human spirits and the demonic spirits and, you know, to say evil and minions of devils or something like that? Or Because there's only, there's only uh, we're not dealing with all these different types. Like, they're not demons because uh, you call a flying black uh, rake, uh, I mean rake, rag, a uh, black shock or uh, a wraith. Mm -hmm. Or what's some of the other names for it that they call those know. little floating black sheet looking ones kind of thing there? That it doesn't mean it's a different type of spirit. Just like the djinn. You know, there's people who write the whole book or movie on a djinn like it's a different djinn. I mean, it's a different demon. Uh, I mean, it's not a demon, but it's a different evil spirit. They're all fallen angels, the same ones. Just different ranks, different uh, properties. You know, like it's that's a demon of this, that's a demon of that. And we that shouldn't become obsessed with it. So what? So you got a demon of fire in your house. He smells like... And that's probably not even the case. You know, not unless someone's like, you know, conjuring it up or something. And, uh, see here. Some, um... 
Some shadow people are ghosts, but their blackness reveals the type of ghost they are. They are either condemned ghosts or demonic. In a very rare case, they are a you know, purgatory spirit. It is as simple as black and white. It is. One of the other things we notice, too, is uh, when you're sitting in your dark room at night and you see something walk and approach you in the dark, in a pitch black room, you can see the silhouette, the body, the movement, and everything. You know, you don't hear anything like a creaking floorboard or nothing. Why is that so much darker than the black room? Because it's not a good spirit. Or it's so deep in purgatory that it's almost, uh, we'll just say, to the, uh, to the property or attributes or whatever you talk about. If you talk about something of physical description. Now I'm starting to get sciencey. I don't want to do that uh, too much. I'll lose some people. Uh, that uh, we can, just like I said that about the purgatory spirits, when they get a little brighter over time, well, the ones that are really dark are, are going to be pretty, pretty much. And look when they show up. They show up at 3 o'clock in the morning. So look for the other footprints. And then where are their clothes? I mean, if he was an old Civil War officer, where's his cuff? Where's his collar? Where's his hat? Where's his musket or whatever? Why is he naked like Oscar the Trophy? That's yeah. a visual. <laughs> That's a visual you don't need. <laughs> um, so, that one can go on there. Um, ghosts may appear to look as solid and real as a living person, grayscale, color, semi transparent. So, uh, give us some descriptions there. I uh, uh, know that you two gals have seen these things uh, that kind of variate from this typical kind of like black and white semi-transparent what do ghosts look like uh, from your well, perspective and, you know I, I've seen them solid and I've seen them gray and I've seen them transparent So, and I've also seen them disembodied and I have to say I'd rather see a whole spirit instead of a disembodied one. <laughs> Is that kind of like, um, I don't want half the hamburger, I want the whole hamburger so I can decide whether I eat it or not? <laughs> exactly, because if you see them disembodied, <laughs> like I've seen, I seen one with an arm. Oh, my God. Exactly. Polishing my son's car uh-huh. and when I was coming home from work, and we live on a dead end, so I was driving down the road, I go, it's about time he's finally <laughs> polishing his car. I've never seen him do that. <laughs> right? <laughs> All I see is his arm polishing the car. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious, Deb. So, yeah, the, it, so well, like, what it is is it's disconcerting when you see like half a body and then like the bottom is missing and you're like, okay, I'm not looking at that. I did not see that. I think I'll just look the other way. <laughs> <laughs> it's Frankie. I, I know. This, I would rather see the um, whole thing. Don't just yeah, give me really. a body. And then I seen this guy. I was at a stop sign. I was on a back country road. I think it was in Reading. Mm-hmm. And I, I I told the story before, but mm-hmm. for those who haven't heard it, you're going to hear it again. That's okay. right. Give it Not to that us. Often. That's good. <laughs> that um, I stopped at the stop sign, and right there was the church on the right hand side. It was a four way stop. And this uh, disembodied figure from the waist down, it was a man, and uh, he had black pants on, he was really thin, and uh, the shoes looked a little pointed, but he mm-hmm. just ran across the street to this other old house. Mm-hmm. And I just, I just watched him. I, no one, n- nobody else was on the road except me at the time. I said, that's strange. I saw him coming from the church. <laughs> and so um, oh my gosh. Um, when I got to work that day, I called Lorraine right away, and I told her what I'd just seen and where I had seen it. Mm-hmm. And she she laughed. She goes, yes, I've seen that, too. And then she explained it to me that <clears throat> that church used to, <clears throat> excuse me, um, hide and um, send um, the slaves un- through underground tunnel to the next house. Yeah. So it was their, like, fair way to get there, you know? Mm-hmm. Yes. But she's seen it, and Gerald Brill knew the spot I was talking about when I mentioned it to him. Yeah. And that was um, about eight years ago. Hmm, that wasn't that long wow. ago. Wow. That's not that long yeah. ago. 
Yeah. Eight or nine years ago, yeah. So um, it was after Jason had passed. So they were, so, like, re- making mad dashes across to the church, you know, to not exactly. be discovered. Yeah, exactly. that totally makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a historical uh, kind of a ghostly yeah, he operation. Didn't walk slow. He made a mad dash, like you said. <laughs> yeah. Aye. Gerald Brittle told an interesting story in one of our archives. We'll put, uh, we're starting to put archives up uh, on the on YouTube channel, uh, slash the real deal, spell with all E's. And uh, it was just that he was in, uh, without revealing what state he's in or what city, he's on the East Coast, too, and there's some really old cities, old post office, oh, old yeah. town. And he was walking to the post office, and as he walked by, he saw two men digging a grave with top hats. And the one actually acknowledged his presence by tipping his hat to him like this, the one that was mm-hmm. facing the, where he was walking. So he gets to the post office, and then he's coming back, he looks up and there's there's no men, there's no grave being worked on, nothing. And then so he's asking himself, what was that all about? You know, like how did that serve a purpose? Uh, you yeah. know, and, see, this is kind of the big question on this. It's like, okay, if that was a purgatory spirit, wouldn't? Yeah. Why are we seeing this? And uh, that's okay. Where's the limestone for you, res- residual theory people? You know that something got recorded and in the limestone and it's playing back yeah, you know exactly. that kind of thing so that uh, that's one kind of for a round table in itself and everybody's got their own theories but I think some of these things like civil war battles we have Wilson's Creek here we mentioned before and uh, the battlefield road here in Springfield was named so because of the civil war obviously yeah. they said in uh, historical archives that th- it was such a bloody uh, battle that you were knee deep in blood and guts. That's how bad it was. Bad. Yeah, knee deep. So we're going to have some of those things that seem to be like um, repeating in time and showing to us uh, for some reason. And w- what we notice sometimes too is when a ghost appears, sometimes you see their environment around them. Not just period clothes, but the objects that uh, are part of their purgatory scenario or whatever reason we're saying I'm not saying you're always seeing purgatory scenarios like the mm-hmm. Canada the battlefield that one ghost could bring the whole battlefield scene to you when they appear it could just be that one spirit just like the maid in the house sometimes people did see uh, the ghostly uh, props so to speak I don't know if uh, you guys ever experienced or read or seen anything about that but that one's uh not everything has an explanation. We're not supposed to know everything. Like the zombie road shadow things on the top of the hill that I experienced uh, witnessing the, and the documentary Children of the Grave. Uh, that's, that's, a, that's a mystery in itself, too. And, uh, yeah, that, this Actually, is a good, this is a good, good. talk. I found that sort of creepy. <laughs> oh, that. I saw it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it faded out, too. That was, we talked mm-hmm. about this before, but the, the other times it was, uh, I don't know, a ghost and a demon. Uh, mm-hmm. This big, hulking black thing slowly fading out as we're throwing holy water on it. And it just did it over time, like, you know, starting to change that transparency level little by little to more translucent until there's nothing there over a period of uh, one minute, two minutes. That's what these things did on the hill on Zombie Road up the up uh, by Eureka, Missouri, is that there was all these, it looked like people standing uh, along trees, like there's a bunch of hillbillies up there that are about ready to massacre you because the Hatfield McCoys are, like, standing on opposite sides of the creek. And as we watched it with the, uh, it was the, um, what do they call that, the FLIR camera, it's called the thermal imaging camera. It was a grayscale one. It had, uh, you know, a detector for, Mm -hmm. you know, that would beep when you went on something that was extreme, I think. And those figures were darker than the dark night when they were fixed. And it was cold. It was like, the, it went down to 30 that night. And these things were colder than 30 degrees so that they showed black. Everything that was colder was black and everything that was warmer was brighter. That's usually what it is, like red on the color ones is, a, you know, on the way up. And then when it's white, it's really hot. Even though sometimes they seem to flip it around in some of those, those shows. But it faded out over time. And it was just really strange. Like, what's that all about? It's like, this isn't Hollywood. Ken, well, how far is Zombie Road from Pythian? Oh, uh, that's like uh, like three hours, because you'll have to cut over to I-70, I think. And okay. It's a, 
so and so we call away. it different dioceses. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's not that far. Um, I don't know. I think you have to arrange ahead of time too, because I think the sheriff will run you off. Because after the documentary, too many people started to try to come over there, and so now they got. Because there's, there's there's people that live in houses up on a hill before you go deeper into the woods. So yeah, it's it would have to be arranged with the local authorities and the owners or something like that first, uh, kind of like the uh, the documentary filmmakers uh, that movie did. So oh, uh, keep it uh, monitored on the chat room. Looking ahead, we have um, somebody wanted to know about pet oh, ghosts. We may because oh, we yeah. have so many more points to make, and it's ten till. We may have to make it a part three on ghosts. I hate to say it, but. Yeah, I realize that we're time, actually kitties, just a little over haven't. halfway. So I'm going to put that at the bottom of the list so we can cover pet ghosts. We later. still got technically tw- uh, 20 minutes, but we're cutting it off exactly at 10 after. And uh, uh, pet ghosts. Write it on the Don't bottom of the list. Vera has to do something. Remember, Vera? I forgot. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. Okay. Already. Okay, so um, I need a memory stick. I don't know. Should I bring it? Should we bring a pet ghost to, and then just and then pick say a name, the, pick a name. <laughs> <laughs> That's the biggest hint I can give you, Farrah. Pick a name. Oh my! Pick a name. My brain is it, my brain is on dead. I want to give something away? Oh, that's right. That's right. Well, I'm going to announce it at the end. So okay. <laughs> I'm announced at the end, so Ken can get on with his cute little uh, list he's got here. So. <laughs> cute little list. <laughs> yeah, a cute little list of 500 things, so let's get on. Okay, yeah, because we're not going yeah, to get through them all. They go too fast. Cause that's only 12 of them in. Uh, <laughs> actually, that's 11 in there, so uh, the, we... Ghosts may appear to look as solid a living or human gray color. Okay, that's kind of an extension of 11. We're talking about the appearance of. And we just talked about Faustina's fiery face. I saw a fiery face when I was very young mm-hmm. before, and it was grayscale. It wasn't color. I'm not sure why some of them were grayscale. It's kind of strange. It was dark. It was a night. started as a pixie and a, a pixel, whatever, not pixie. It started swirling towards me, uh, and then when I got close, I could see it was a man's face, an old man's face in the, mm-hmm. in the flame. What's the point? I didn't even know to pray for purgatory uh, ghosts back then too young but they can you know i mean it, the variety matches it's just that when they start having demonic traits you know like uh that's when you you, you uh you need to automatically consider they might be demonic spirits don't take fascination but take action to get it out okay number 13 purgatory spirit may be aware of your version of the world we said this before when the maid goes to the house is sending a flight of stairs that doesn't exist in the castle anymore because it's damaged are no longer part of the, the structure, and they can act and react. You know, people say you know because they don't react to your presence that they're a residual spirit, and that's not true because remember we talked about it, like the others. You remember how uh, Margot? Uh, what was her name? The what's the gal was in the others? Vera? Nicole Kidman. Nicole Kidman. Remember how they didn't see these people that lived there? They didn't know they lived there. They thought they were sleeping in their beds. They were in another version of that house from the past. They actually thought they were haunted. Mm-hmm. They thought they were haunted. Isn't that strange? And they were actually yeah, that was was haunting the people. That was a great That was an ending, interesting like that take. One. It was definitely mm-hmm. something. Somebody experienced something, and that's how that movie came to be, because there was too many parallels to how ghosts have actually intersected in our world and Mm -hmm. how mediums can actually um, contact spirits that are trapped in purgatory because as we know at the end of the movie we find out that she murdered her children yeah that would have been a purgatory scenario (coughs) purgatory scenario Mm -hmm. so yeah um, yeah some of these movies we mention it uh, because a lot of you've seen them out there, and I think they make for some good examples and case studies, not mm-hmm. uh, promoting the occult or anything, uh, that sort of thing. Um, see, uh, okay, so uh, yeah, it's obvious. You know, you should not directly try to confront one of these spirits because you don't know. 
Uh, I, we're reading some book by some, uh, uh, let's see, Koch, Dr. Koch. He's another denomination, and uh, he's spot on when he says, uh, test the spirit. He goes to the uh, the Gospel of John where it just says, uh, ask the spirit or the person, you know, in question or whatever, to, uh, you know, reveal that Jesus is uh, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And for some reason, they can't do that. And I mean, when you get hired demon possessions, it's mainly because they're possessed more and they can be buffered from these effects in a person they, rather than just being a pure spirit. Uh, I don't know if that makes sense or not. That sometimes they can suck this stuff up and pretend like it doesn't bother them. We know that demons have appeared as Jesus and Mary and apparitions. Garabandal is probably an example there, too. So we can't trust uh, that there is a one-size-fits-all. Um, but, see, uh, we should pray for intercession prayers, and there is one in the back of the book. I think it's on the website, swordsofstmichael.org. If it's not, I'll put it there tomorrow. It's, uh, it's a novena. <clears throat> I don't know. It's a week novena. Seven days, I think. And it's for the Spirit, and it worked. Uh, we were uh, When we put the book out, and people, a lot of people bought it. They were in an eye haunted community. Originally back in 2007, I think it was, or 8, they, people wrote me and, and told me how great that worked. But that would only work on purgatory spirits, for the most part. If it doesn't work at all, you might suspect that you have a demonic spirit. And add that to the checklist. But don't try to do that, you know, midget poltergeist lady stuff going, you know, go into the light. You know, you're not going to help them that way. You know, it's like, have their guardian angel. You're not a spirit that can just, like, leave your body and go take them by the hand. What do you think they got a guardian angel exactly. for? I mean, if the guardian angel is not with them in purgatory, you know, all the time or at that moment, when it comes time for them to get out of purgatory, you know, the Blessed Mother, and guardian angel, or who knows, Jesus himself, what scenario? Well, according to the mm -hmm. saints and somebody's, uh, the Blessed Mother even appears to the uh, the poor souls, and they call her the star of the sea. Um, so uh, th this is uh, chronicled in the, the fathers of the church, lives of the saints, and so forth. Church mystics that were recognized and validated by a church. Okay, see, um, good ghosts will not form a relationship with you. An extension of number 14 that we did. They do not form a relationship. They don't try to. In other words, if your grandpa's dead, he never got to know you because you were too young and he died when you were too young to remember. He's not going to come here and try to start a relationship with you. It's a lie. They're not allowed to do that. That's actually tempting them to, uh, start, you know, next thing you know, and it's like, Grandpa, can you predict the future? What should I do about that? Can you help me win my, are you know, you're going to start asking them questions that you should be going to God for, too. So it, it promotes uh, uh, the uh, breaking the first commandment, in addition to, uh, you know, the other details. But you can't trust it. <clears throat> Two-way two -way communication is going to very rarely happen. If you ask, why are you here? Why are you here? What do you want? Those two questions right there. You have a right to ask those. You're not creating conversation with them. And if they start trying to converse with you, you, you don't saw these uh, these experiences in the Bible with the angels. They were very brief. They told you exactly what you need to know, and they left. Even the Blessed Mother oh, yeah. apparitions, you know, like if it's 13 days or, or a Fatima apparition, very brief. It didn't happen 2,000 plus times. And go in there and, and saying, "How are you today? How's the wife and kids?" You know, I mean, uh, why would Mary appear to just to uh, have it? Those are good examples there. Uh, okay, that's the thing about this list. I got to keep like, what number was I on again? I, I'll I'll try not to do this next time. We have a list again that I wrote up. I just could <laughs> check them off as you go through them. That would I help. know I could. I don't have a clipboard on my lap. There we give it us here. Give me that. <laughs> There is, uh, okay, there is no such thing as a residual haunting. Well, we said that already. I'm not going to go into the science behind that on this. Maybe we'll bring it up next week. The residual haunting. And we are going to bring up that question for the astrodemonologist segment rather than to run it to uh, entirely for the, for the ghost thing. Because I think, because people said, what do you gain from lights out? Someone said, and I've heard that one before. So let's bring that up right now since we're here on that. Uh, I'd just be mentioning it. Why do these ghost hunter shows, Farrah, turn the lights out on, on TV shows? Are they really going to get more evidence? Are they going to uh, get more experiences? What do you think, Farrah? I have no clue. 
I don't think they're going to have any experiences. I don't know. What do you think, Deb? <laughs> I'm just going to pass on that. <laughs> I know. It's like, can we all hurl chunks at the same time? Yeah, right? Yeah. Seriously? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, let's... It's like, Deb, let's go sit in the middle of the yard and, and, and like, we'll wait till dark and see if anything happens. <laughs> well, I won't go alone. I'll bring you yeah. <laughs> I know. Oh, my gosh. Yes, the beast from the east. Oh, my gosh. She's yeah. huge. That's what she is. <laughs> she's totally yeah. huge. It's like she's going to eat somebody just looking at them. Bring her saddle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, bring her saddle and a nice tasty bone. Yeah, I she might leave your hand. <laughs> yeah. As soon as my grandson grows up a little, by the time he's three, yeah. we're going to put it on her. <laughs> Are you kidding? By the time the kid's six months, put a harness and let him, you know, pull him around in the snow. Yeah, we had a collie. I was never able to ride it. I was kind of mad. Collies are kind of like got really skinny legs, and they don't seem to be very strong. You know, they're made for running and not uh, not not farm work, I guess. <laughs> yeah, a kid is a work breed, like mm-hmm. the shepherd. Yeah, you know, like part hard horse. Oh, part exactly. Dog. It's it's they're all about. They want a job. They're yeah. on task. Yeah. So mm-hmm. let's see. Lights out. Okay, what do we have to benefit? Um, some people who have had these experiences and they, they wake up in the middle of the night, I told them to turn light, night lights on your room so you don't have to deal with seeing the shadow form move in the darkness just so it doesn't raise fear. You can only do so much and saying prayers and be gone in the name of Jesus Christ to uh, uh, throw holy water around the room or whatever and then roll over and go back to sleep. But who wants to wake up and see that thing standing at your bed and scare the heck out of you like some old uh, Jerry Lewis movie, you know? The, it's not funny when it happens to you and then your heart races there. So we have people turn lights on and just find a way to go to sleep with lights on your room until you get past this trouble, you know, with the solutions that, you know, we suggest. Either that or borrow the neighbor's three children and let them bounce all over you all night. You won't be lonely and you won't be scared. <laughs> <laughs> well, having a dog in your bed doesn't help either, apparently, the uh, no, but you can hide behind your dog, especially yeah. if you got a dog like Deb, as big as a house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I think that the idea is, is mostly retaining to the demonic spirit. And I, I told this to uh, some team uh, mm. in 2006 or something uh, originally, I think. I went into detail telling them about that. Uh, if you use the ultraviolet lights that are accompanying the cameras that they put up so they can catch these things like... Camera one, okay. Camera two, camera three, no ghost. Camera four, no ghost. Camera five. Yeah. The problem is, is to uh, spirits and all of them, they don't have eyeballs that are restricted to the light spectrum that ours do. There's like, can you imagine a cat sees better in the dark than we do, right? Except for Farrah, she's got cat eyes. Huh? That these uh, spectrums aren't going to be a limitation of a spirit's uh, perception of vision, we'll just say, because they don't have eyeballs, right? So if that camera lights up the room, <laughs> if that camera lights up the room with with an ultraviolet light and it's so bright that the camera can now pick it up because it can read that spectrum, this electronic <coughs> eye, you just lit the room up. So you lost the advantage of darkness from the spirit's perspective. It's dark for you, it's not for them. Yeah. So that's why it's stupid, first off. Totally. Second thing is, is there's some few cases, it's like, it's not so much it's dark at night, uh, you know, you could say, except uh, demons don't like darkness. You turn the light on, you see things fleet in these cases. Even as kids, they go into the closet, go into the bed, you know, to take the cover of darkness. They creep onto black things like shirts draped over uh, the back of a door hanger or something like that. Black shirts, uh, black whatever. They like that stuff. It's the creeping shadows, I used to call them, like a shadow demon. Not the, you know, shadow person. Uh, I'm one of these stupid... What the heck? Stupid moth. Come here. What are you doing? It's Get- a ghost <laughs> moth, Ken. It's a ghost moth. <laughs> I hate these uh, stupid moths. Uh, <laughs> now I distracted myself. Uh, but the... Uh, so, lights out is... <laughs> I don't know how much you're going to, how advantageous it's going to be at all. Uh, and, and because the demons will appear to you whether your lights are on or off. Uh, you can, I mean, you might be able to see the darker than dark. But see, the camera is probably not going to pick it up. The FLIR camera can. I mean, like I said, they're very cold. 
And, you know, if they're in an uncomfortable place, cold is more the dominant thing, not heat. So, I don't know. Uh, we won't beat that one to death too long uh, because I can go into a lot of levels of detail on this. How it can be possibly true to some degree, but for the most part, it doesn't really give an advantage on, uh, on it. Um, wow, we're uh, we're almost over. I was going to have to wrap it up after this next one here. Poltergeist hauntings will always involve demonic spirits. We talked about poltergeists a little bit last week, so we'll skip over that. And uh, you'll have to listen to the other show on the archive or, you know, YouTube. Human spirits are always limited in their power and ability, which, uh, you know, it, this is something that, you know, was in Gerald Brittle's Demonologist book, too, and there's something that these institutions said that humans could not move any objects over five pounds with PK energy. I'd like to see these films that actually had them moving objects that are uh, less than five pounds, like a penny, with uh, Kreskin's ESP method, you know, telekinesis. Uh, I mean, uh, a psychokinetic energy. Telekinesis is the, uh, you know, the ability to read minds. And then they move it. You know, Patrick Swayze had a heck of a time in Ghost moving a penny, or a dime, or whatever it was, trying to practice that kind of thing. Uh, but those uh, those things are are totally relevant uh, that sometimes uh, people overanalyze the idea that when it's a weak spirit they think it's a human spirit it just means that the demon has not manifested or shown its true strength yet at least that is manifested because we may never see any one particular demon's full power because they're always on a short leash with God one way or another and we open it up we're the ones who give it permission with the uh, with our uh, breaking God's natural laws and, and in sin. A uh, good ghost will not harm living people, even accidentally. Well, yeah, that's true. You know, I mean, they, they're they very aware, and they won't be allowed to. Um, you know, an, an angel may subdue an attacker, but it's not a ghost by definition. You won't see your dead uncle go in there and show up and then beat people up for you if you're getting, uh, you know, roughed up in an alley because you owe somebody money, and then he disappears. That was your angel. He might pretend to be a homeless guy who comes to the rescue or Spider-Man. I don't, I'm getting carried away if I say that. Um, so we have to realize the limits of uh, good human spirits. The human spirits in general in the condemned life would have to have uh, attributes given to them by uh, by demons in the afterlife for them to be able to manifest more power than we can as conscious human beings. Now, if you pass on to heaven, you'll be... That's a little different. You know, God gives you, gives you your... Uh, you won't go there just as some spirit that can't really do anything but float around like you're some disembodied spirit or... Mm -hmm. uh, but that's another story. And finally, a condemned ghost cannot kill. And these acts are never done. Well, you know, even tripping down a, fl a flight of stairs. Well, see, that's the thing, without demonic aid. Uh, but if they're working for the demonic spirit, they can try to push you psychologically and all that thing, you know, to make errors, mistakes, and driving and all that kind of thing. But not directly kill you, like strangle you. The, they still might be lacking the powers unless they are given uh, by demonic spirits. So, don't you love it? Don't you love it? The fastest hour, literally the fastest hour in TV and radio, as we will be broadcasted on other networks, the Paranormal Now Network, iHeartRadio at some point, uh, a few FM stations, too. So, if you're listening on one of those, hello out there in Radio Land. So the real deals will be leaving the house for this time being. Father Bob Bailey next week on the 10th of, uh, of May. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll be back then. Isn't that right, Farrah? And never <laughs> forget, the battle's already won. And we're here to help you fight the fight and win it right. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. God bless. Love you, Dab. Love you guys, too. God bless. God bless. See you next week. Real Deals TV, copyright 2018, a Swords of St. Michael production. Any unauthorized duplication, rebroadcast, or retransmission of this broadcast without the express written permission of the Swords of the Saint Network or that of Kenneth and Fair Deal is strictly prohibited.